introduce uh, a little bit uh, the, the first presentation entitled um, Factors Associated with the Newborn Screening Complaints Among Mothers Who Have Given Birth in a line uh, in clinic in Quezon uh, City, Philippines. So let's uh, welcome to Associated Professor Dr. Uh, Melin Malatino. She's from the Department of Epidemiology and uh, Biostatistics, University of Philippine Man Manila. Please give her a warm welcome. Good afternoon. I am Kaylin Palatino from the College of Public Health, University of the Philippines, Manila. I am actually feeling a little pressured right now because I'm the first presenter, but it's good that there are only a few of us here. <laughs> All right, I will be presenting one component of a bigger study, and the title of my presentation this afternoon has already been uh, announced, Factors Associated with Newborn Screening Compliance. One moment. Newborn screening compliance among mothers who have given birth in lying in clinics in Quezon City, uh, Philippines. Newborn screening is a combination of tests to identify genetic, metabolic, and infectious conditions in newborns before clinical symptoms become apparent. Now, for newborns who have been diagnosed through screening, morbidity, mortality, and disabilities linked to each disease are said to be significantly reduced. In the Philippines, Newborn screening was introduced in 1996 by the Newborn Screening Study Group. The objective of the study group was to determine the incidence of rare diseases, uh, several rare diseases in the country. In 1998, they presented their result to the Department of Health, and in 1999, the uh, Department of Health formed a task force on newborn screening. Fast forward to 2004, Republic Act 2, uh, 9288, or the Newborn Screening Act of 2004, was enacted. Uh, the Newborn Screening Act of 2004 actually covers six rare diseases, and these are the four objectives of the said uh, Republic Act. Uh, in 2014, additional 22 rare diseases were included uh, because of the expanded newborn screening program. This figure presents the prevalence of newborn screening compliance from the year 2010 to 2014 in the Philippines, the blue one, and uh, in the national capital region, the, the red one. As you can see, there, there, is a, there was an increasing trend in the pre uh, com compliance to newborn screening. I would just like to stress that the, this figure contains data from both public and private uh, health facilities. Focusing on, uh, focusing in Quezon City, the, the study site for our study, low prevalence of newborn screening referrals in the lying in clinics were seen in 2009 and 2010, ranging from as low as 5% up to a maximum of 39%. And this low prevalence was attributed to the lack of awareness of mothers and the residents in general on newborn screening. And so the Quezon City government um, passed a resolution to urge all the barangays the, or the villages in Quezon City to launch a campaign supporting the importance of newborn screening in their area. Now, um, only few studies were found that looked into the newborn screening in the Philippines and only one was found to deal with association or factors associated with the compliance on newborn screening. And this study was done in a very small area in the Northern Philippines, among mothers who gave birth in rural health unit. And the study found that the age of mother, the occupation of the mother, the gravidity, parity, as well as the level of awareness and knowledge on newborn screening as significant correlates of, of newborn screening compliance among mothers. Uh, most of the studies look into the factors associated with the level of awareness of uh, the mothers on newborn screening. 
Now, the study objective for this component, for this component of a bigger study, was to determine the factors that are associated with newborn screening compliance among mothers who gave birth in lying in clinics in Quezon City, Philippines. I'll skip this. For the methodology, the whole study actually used mixed method, which is a combination of quantitative and qualitative research design. But this particular component uh, simply used analytic cross-sectional study design. And the study area is like what I said, the Quezon City. Quezon City is one of the biggest cities in the Philippines. It is located in the national capital region. And in Quezon City, they have seven government lying in clinics. And the study population is the population of mothers aged at least 18 years old who have given birth in the Lyme in clinics from years 2010 to 2015. Only data starting from 2010 were available. That's why we started with 2010. For the data collection method, we did review of existing records, particularly review of delivery books in the Lyme in clinics, as well as um, we also cross-match the patient records of mothers with the uh, newborn screening books that are available in the Lyme clinics to determine the um, compliance of the selected mothers in, uh, on newborn screening. For the sample size and the sampling design, we actually did for this, uh, for this component stratified sampling with proportional allocation. The stratification variable is the Lyme in clinic and then a sample of mother records, records of mothers, was drawn from each line in clinic. And we got 710 records of mothers. We selected or randomly selected 710 records of mothers. For the study, our dependent variable or outcome variable was the compliance of mothers to newborn screening. A mother was considered compliant, compliant if she availed of, availed of the basic newborn screening package in the lying in clinic. Now, if a mother, a mother who did not avail of the package in the lying in clinic actually went outside, went to another facility to have the child, um, her newborn screened, in this study, she was still classified as non-compliant because like what I said earlier, our method is review of records in the lying in clinic does not have did not have a record of that of mothers going out and uh, availing of the service outside we have five independent variables these uh, were age of mother the civil status classified as either single or married field health membership either a member or dependent or non-member or non-dependent gravidity uh, mothers were classified as premigravid or multigravid. Parity, uh, the number of times that a mother had given birth to fetus with gestational age of 24 weeks or more. And mothers were classified as either primiparous or multiparous. Okay, so those are our five exposure variables. Mean standard deviations and ranges were computed for continuous variables while Frequencies and percentages were, were obtained for qualitative variables. In order to determine the factors that are associated with newborn screening compliance, we did logistic regression analysis and we did it in two steps. The first step is to determine the crude association between the outcome variable and each independent variable using simple logistic regression an analysis. And those uh, independent variables or exposure variables that had a p-value of 0.25 were actually included in the next step, which is the use of multiple regression analysis. And we use backward elimination method for the selection, uh, for the variable selection, and well, we utilized WADS test and likelihood ratio test. The final model in the analysis uh, contained the outcome variable, of course, and the independent variables with p-value less than or equal to 0.05. The level of significance used what was 0 0.05, uh, adjusted odds ratios, and 95% confidence intervals were recorded, and we used for the analysis the intercodes data version 12 for Windows. 
Now for the results, this table contains the characteristics of selected mothers, the 710 mothers who gave birth in Lyman Clinic. Their mean age was 25.5 years, quite young, with a five-year uh, standard deviation. Majority of the mothers were single, 74.4%. Uh, majority also of them were multigravid, 74.4.1, uh, as well as multiparous, 72.7. For the field health membership, as you can see, only 23.4% were classified as either member or dependent. The rest are non-members. And finally, for the compliance, newborn screening compliance, only 37.8% were recorded as compliant. Now this, uh, this table presents the distribution of the mothers according to the seven lying in clinics and their status as either compliant or non-compliant. The lowest percentage of compliance was 32.6, the highest being 52.9, but 52.9 seemed to be an outlier away from the others. Now for the crude association of the outcome variable with each of the independent variable, um, no statistical association was found between age and newborn screening compliance. For the, uh, there is a significant, there was a significant association between sing, uh, civil status as well, as well as field health membership. I will discuss this further later. And only borderline association was found between gravidity and parity. Now looking at controlling for, this is not controlling for any, the effect of any other variable. Now controlling for the effects of the other variables, the final model contains uh, the variables field health membership, um, civil status, and parity. Now adjusting for the effect of the other variables, field health members dependents are, were found to be Four, per, uh, four times more likely to be newborn screening compliant compared to the non-members um, or non-dependents. Similarly, the odds of being newborn screening compliant is 1.6 times higher among married, married mothers than single mothers. And then finally, similarly, um, primiparous mothers are 1 point, were 1.5 times more likely to be newborn screening compliant compared to the primiparous uh, mothers. For the discussion and recommendation, time is up. Okay, I'll wrap this up faster. Uh, this is actually expected that we have uh, the, the odds of being compliant among field health members because field health members can actually avail of um, newborn screening for free. At the, at the lying in clinic. On the other hand, for the non field health members, they still have to go somewhere else and pay the fee. While in the lying in clinic, it's free if you're a field health member. Married mothers were 1.6 times more likely to comply to the program, newborn screening program. And um, one of the reasons for this, the researchers thought, is that because uh, married people have family planning and pre marriage seminar prior to the, the ceremony. That is why the mothers already had an idea, married mothers already had an idea or awareness about the newborn screening prior to getting pregnant. And finally, a parity of 1.5. We looked at our data and we saw that 95% of primiparous mothers were also um, primigravid mothers. And we found a study that says primigravid mothers are more likely to go to prenatal checkups re religiously and during prenatal checkups, newborn screening is actually introduced to mothers. So they already had an idea and they already had time more or less to prepare to have their child screened once the newborn is, uh, once they give birth. All right. Now, I mentioned earlier that the data collection method is records review. And so the researchers did not have control over how the data were actually recorded and how accurate the information uh, the information as well as the completeness of the data recorded. And so that may have introduced bias into the study. Um, also, the way we are, we are, we know that the way we uh, defined our outcome variable also may have introduced some kind of bias in the study. We did uh, several recommendations. We have several recommendations for future researchers. 
Um, we recommend that they investigate other factors that may affect newborn screening, probably through surveys, uh, as well as I, we are also recommending that they look into the health-seeking behaviors of mothers as well as, as exploratory studies on field health membership. For Quezon City Health Department and Lyman Clinics, um, we recommend that they reach out to pregnant women in the community to encourage more prenatal checkups, to develop health promotion and education programs, to instill health-seeking behavior among mothers, and well, to help future researchers to maintain, of course, not only future researchers, but also the, 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 the accuracy of the data that they have, is to maintain good and complete patient records. For PhilHealth to make application more mem for membership easy enough so that more mothers will apply and finish the whole process. And this is actually a collaboration between PhilHealth as well as the health facility. And finally, for Department of Health to develop more effective health promotion and education tools so that mothers may be more aware and knowledgeable on newborn screening. Thank you very much. These are my references. Uh, thank you for your for actively listening. Thank you so much, Dr. Mary. Uh, to know, um, uh, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please directly ask her. Um, we would like to present you with the certificate of presentation. Thank you. <laughs> Move on to the second presentation. 